a cheese butty and a pint of best bitter. And what better time and place to eat me ploughmans than here on a farm that produces much of the ingredients, malting barley and wheat, and it's been a difficult harvest, but now it's safely gathered in. But things are going to be a bit different this year because Manor Farm in Yorkshire have accepted my Buzz of Biodiversity Challenge. What they've got to do is produce the food we all depend on while at the same time making Manor Farm a better place for wildflowers and wildlife. It's easy for me to issue a challenge, but these are the guys who've got to make it work. Marek Nowakowski, an agronomist, has been developing a wildflower margin at Radcott Bridge Farm in Oxfordshire. His work has shown it is possible to put the biodiversity back into farming. We've travelled ten paces from where the farmer started drilling and spending money. I'm now at the beginning of where he will start to earn a profit. Everything behind me has been a direct loss to the farm operation. The challenge to Marek and the Manor Farm team is to prove that increasing biodiversity is possible without reducing farm profits. The bulk of the biodiversity which interests me is squeezed in along the edge here. And in amongst that, there's some pretty nasty things, alien annual weeds, which all the time are trying to get into the farmer's crop. It's a continual struggle. So come on, tell me, how are you going to solve that? Keep the farmer happy, but put the biodiversity back. What we're going to do, David, as you say, the majority of biodiversity is squeezed into a tiny area. What we're looking at is extending this area with a mixture of grasses and flowers that, by being perennial, stop the spread of annuals. We know uh, from past experience that these field edges yield less. So let's disregard that from a crop point of view and let's have a look at increasing the biodiversity in that area. There is only one countryside. It's got to feed us and we need to step up the biodiversity. Starting on the edge of the field, it's least impact to farmer. And if 80% of the biodiversity is on field edges such as the one we're looking at now, if we can improve that field edge, the biodiversity must go up. So what we've got is last year's brome, black grass, wild oats have dropped their seed. In this case, it's, it's young brome. It wants to spread into the farming area and the farmer has got to stop that happening. So this, if you like, really is the agri-environmental battle line. Farm chemicals will be used on farms and we're testing the survival of these sown species against modern farm chemicals so that we can put a mixture together that is safe when the farmer goes spraying should these margins catch any drift. We need to get this one finished because uh, the forecast is for it to rain. So we need to get the seed on and it rolled in so that at least the, the small seed has contact with the soil and can germinate. How detailed is your information, say, field eight? Right, the basic facts are we know field eight is going into winter wheat this, this year. Uh, we know it's 9.24 hectares, and we know the nutrient status of that field on a square acre basis. As far as I understand, all the information about this field, good bits, not so good bits, and the bad bits are on this disc. Now what happens? Right, quite simply, this goes into the machine and it translates the information off this disc into the computer on the machine and variably applies the fertiliser. But how does it know where it is? Ah, that's the magic of the satellite. Global positioning. What we've got is a field that's going into spring barley. We've prepared this part of it early 
and we've shown two demonstrations here, one looking at mixture types, one looking at management techniques. So what we'll be able to show people is the selection of species mix, mixes and the management to get the best of both. These are the fescues coming through. Things like the golden oat grass, the crested dog's tail will be on its way. And some of the early flowering species are coming in. Obviously a lot of poppies here. Um, most of what we can see are poppies. That one, oh hooray, look, cornflower. Oh wow. Cornflower <laughs> coming. But wow, crested dog's tail hates competition. There's lots and lots of nutrient here. What well, you... we're going to manage the competition. But yes, it's a fertile site. The skills that are needed to know how to mow, or not how to mow, but how often to mow and when to mow, will give more things a greater chance rather than just chucking it in and, and letting it get on with it. You know, you're either a total nutcase or a blooming genius. Well, <laughs> time will tell. February, the crops on the margins are still sleeping. But now is the time to plant hedges and create new wildlife habitat. Spring 1999, a deluge. Rivers burst their banks, fields flooded, and the local town was submerged for a week. But eventually things got underway. Spring work began in earnest. Farmers using chemicals are often accused of damaging the countryside. Our research has shown that on many occasions where weed pressure is high, chemicals can remove the weeds in favour of the sown species. The experiment behind me is looking at nine farm chemicals and what out of the sown desirable species lives after spraying and what dies, so we can put mixtures together that are safe if farmers need to use them. There's a scientist here by the name of Bill. He's studying everything with a Latin name that creeps, crawls, flies. This is the very beginning, and we come back year on year to find out how things are changing. Our job this year was to do a baseline survey of the farm so that when they develop the habitats for wildlife, we'll be able to see how far we've come. There's traditionally an antipathy between farms and conservationists. conservationists think maybe that farms aren't interested at all in wildlife. In fact, I've found that very few have no interest at all. And uh, it's really been inspiring the way that the lads on the farm have taken an interest and learnt the names of some of the things I've shown. What is the seed mixture which would then be appropriate to put onto that? One of the biggest problems, of course, is, is making everybody aware of the work that you're doing. And, and particularly with a subject like these environmental issues, we've got to come to the point where everybody is at least singing from the same book. It might not be from the same page, but they've got to be starting to sing from the same book. We're under a bit of pressure, are we not, from, from the public, if you like, to sort of farm responsibly. Um, they like to know where things come from, but they also like to know that we do look after the land, and if we can put something back into it in the form of maybe some margins to help the wildlife, it's very much an environmental issue, I think, as well. It's not just a load of rhetoric again, is it? It's not something that we're being told to do. We can actually come here and actually see it working. And I think that's what I like, you know. It's very easy to go to the shows and what have you and see a small plot that may well have been planted only the week before. But to actually come onto a farm where the, the owner has allowed it to happen because he's interested in it as well, I think, yes, it fills me with, with a great sense of I'd like to do this, I'd like to do something like this and, and carry it on. I reckon we're now done till harvest. Right, OK. Barakid's, um, my agronomist, he advises me on the arable side of the farm, but he and I share um, an interest in, in conservation, and he and I, between us, have really sort of developed the conservation on this farm, the idea of the uh, meadows, the hedgerows, the new plantations, the new woodlands. Well, it's spectacular. This, this was a field of winter wheat. It was an arable field, and it's now just this amazing visual picture of wildflowers. And the effect is just absolutely phenomenal. And I think that this 
could be what you're seeing on field margins throughout the country. Given the choice, I would think most members of the public would far prefer this, this wonderful, colourful vision than to see some of the, the set-aside fields that are dotted around the countryside at present. This isn't a miracle. We've farmed this using the skills that Andrew's got, the bit of skills that I've got, your management skills as a team. Yes. This can be done in most places, but the policy makers have got to want it, the public have got to see it, then it'll happen. Financially, the wildflower meadows give me an income very similar to set-aside income. But for the same amount of money, I just feel that I'm putting a great deal more back into the environment, into conservation, by growing the wildflower meadow. After 10 years of this, I mean, my advice to any farmer thinking of taking this up would be get professional advice. Make sure you're putting the right seed mix that will suit your soil type, the acidity, the altitude, everything else. Otherwise, you're wasting your time and your money.